We're taking it easy with tutorials right now because I'm gearing up for some massive makeovers, so let's dive into this beginner DIY. The two main tools we'll be working with are a circular saw and a power drill, and I will list absolutely everything down below. Another thing you want to have on hand are these things called speed squares. They come in different sizes, but you can purchase what is within your budget. You also want to have some clamps. You don't have to have anything fancy. Homemade Modern Evaluated does a great job at showing you how to use the clamps that I just showed you. You'll want a straight edge and a measuring tape as well, and a handy dandy pencil holder that Wood Brain got for me. Like, thanks girl. I'm going to go ahead and make a mark at 17 inches from the straight edge of the scrap MDF that I have laying around in my shop, and then connect that with my ruler. You want to make sure that you clamp down and secure the piece that you're cutting with a circular saw to make sure it's not wiggling when you go to run the saw through it. What I like to do versus just like freely cut my material down, I will line my blade up on the opposite side of the line where you know I don't want to lose that material. So I will then line my ruler up on the opposite side of the saw and clamp that down, ensuring that it's straight with my speed square. And that way I have a nice smooth track to run along to make sure that it's nice and smooth and straight. I like to adjust my circular saw so the blade just comes out a little bit past the thickness, not like a whole chunk of my blade hanging down below. You also want to make sure prior to cutting that you have your safety gear, which is including safety glasses so the wood doesn't kick up into your eye, some ear protection, and a mask so you're not breathing in the dust. I cut the base out with the circular saw and then I cut down the one by twos, which I'm leaving all the measurements down below in the description box for you. I ended up switching out last minute to one by twos. Right here you're seeing two by twos in the piece of MDF that we just cut out, but just when they magically switch sizes later, it's still scrap wood that I had on hand. I just thought it would look a lot better. You always wanna be sure to protect your work surface. I like using reusable drop cloths that I have on hand for a while. Whatever you want your base color of this whole situation to be, go ahead and paint about two layers on top of your base. I am using an ultra pure white by Bear and an eggshell finish, but it's not really gonna matter. Actually, I take the back, it would matter because I think if you use semi-gloss, it would be way too shiny. I didn't want to be basic and keep it flat and be like, bada bing, bada bing, it's all done, like this easy. No, I wanted to add some depth and some texture because I think this won't just live in Cruz's nursery his whole life. This might become a part of their home decor is what I'm hoping. So I had some wrapping or like stuffing, what, tissue paper on hand for gifts. And I just took some white tissue paper because that was my base color, crumpled it up all good until it was like smushy and soft, and then laid that out flat over the top of the base that we just painted white. When I had enough tissue paper to cover the base, I took that off and then mixed together this matte decoupage glue and hot water into an old Windex bottle that I cleaned and sprayed that over the top of the base without the tissue paper on. I came back and laid it on top and just kind of let it sit how it was gonna fall because I didn't want it to be super flat. I wanted to add some texture to it. After it sit for maybe not even five minutes, I went back in, sprayed another light layer, and then took my paintbrush and patted it down so all those air bubbles were removed, but those veins, if you will, were still showing. I let that dry overnight and moved on to creating the quote for the entire thing. And I used my brother's scan and cut. This video is not sponsored by them. I am a partner with them, but this video is not. I actually just used this to cut out the quote. I'm personally going to be doing a Thin Lizzy song lyric because that's what my brother said reminded him of Cruz. And I'm going to be laying it out in the form of a book page. I saw this by Megan Batune, so I'll link that for you as well. I used that decoupage water mixture and a straight edge and clamped that down as I started to space the lettering just per my liking. But you can space it however you want and lay the quote out however you please. I didn't move the ruler until I went in after I liked where the lettering was and just took that foam brush with a very light layer of that water decoupage glue mixture. And once that was thoroughly coated and it was kind of sitting there, I felt comfortable to move on to the next sentence or the next word, next line, sorry, the next line. Sort of kind of lied. I did add one more coat of that eggshell white um, on top of the tissue paper and let that dry. And then I added the quote just to get rid of any dust or debris that may have fallen in. I decided to add another detail by making the page number, quote unquote, on this wall decor piece, Cruz's birthday. And when I stepped back and saw the quote and everything kind of meshed together, I knew I had to add one 
final detail. Instead of a title line, I did a little heartbeat, so it made it a little bit more personal, and then I sprayed that glue water mixture, decoupage water mixture on top of it and let that sit. I did make some touch-ups because the glue was attracting a little bit of dust, or the decoupage glue was attracting a little bit of dust, and we're gonna move on to doing a DIY frame for this, but it's not really your traditional frame. Any one that you guys can do. So I'm going to be taking one by twos, the measurements are down below, and I'm staining them with an early American stain. I'm gonna go ahead and go in with some gloves I've used before, a foam brush, you're gonna need a hammer, and I like to have like a paint can opener that's free at any like box store that you go to, and I'm using a crystal clear satin finish and coating those as well prior to installing them onto the wall decor piece. I personally tend to lean towards a satin or a matte finish, but if you want that extra sheen, you can definitely get a high gloss or a different type of finish that suits your fancy. You're gonna hammer that on shut to store it properly, and then we're gonna move on to attaching it. I'm gonna be using a strap clamp and then wood glue, some wood filler if you wanna fill the pin nail holes that we're gonna be making, and a wood glue brush. Where I'm putting the glue on these one by twos, you can also choose to route out that thickness of the backing onto those one by twos just to make it look a little bit more seamless but to keep it beginner if you just want to glue it and then clamp it to the backing nice and securely however which way you have that it doesn't have to be the shop clamp that I have or the crazy Bessie clamps I'm just showing a crazy amount of different clamps that are available to you to make this work as a reminder, I'm not even kidding you, it's gonna be obnoxious in my description box, but I have linked everything we are using, everything I've spoken about down below for you, just for a quick reference, and also for a buying guide. If you guys are looking to start with a really simple yet beautiful DIY wall decor, but involving a little bit of power tools. By no means is this necessary. The wood glue is strong enough to hold this frame onto it. You're just not gonna be able to hang the hardware onto the frame. I went in with a pin nailer, which have the tiniest of holes, so I didn't bother filling them, just to add a little bit of extra security. Now all we have to do is add the hanging hardware, and there's a ton of different ways to do this, but you wanna make sure that you are compensating for the weight of what you are hanging onto the wall. You can't buy a five pound like weight-bearing hanger and then hang a 20 pound picture frame and then not expecting it to fall out of the wall at some point. I just screwed two hooks onto the back that again supported the weight of the wall decor and ran some heavy duty wire right across, twisted it onto itself, and there we go. We have some pretty personalized and gorgeous wall decor if I do say so myself. I hope that you guys took a little bit of inspiration and some motivation to dip your toes into some power tools because we technically used the circular saw and the drill, which are two essential tools you're gonna need for basically anything you're tackling woodworking wise. So I hope that you guys, you know, put this on your list and give it a go. Tag me in it, let me see what you got because I would love to see you guys progress alongside with me. Just to be completely transparent with you guys, I'm in the middle of some pretty hefty makeovers. If you wanna follow along over on my Instagram, you'll see that I'm in the middle of our master closet makeover and a few other great things that are gonna be coming. Hence why they're gonna be more project-based tutorials over the next couple of weeks. My apologies in advance, but May, my birthday month, we're gonna kick it off strong.